Et son meilleur ami, tu sais même pas où il est allé. Où il est, ton pote Welcome to our weekly film show with Lisa Nesselson and myself. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Eve. Welcome to the programme. Now, we're starting with the big winner at this year's Cannes Film Festival. Parasite won the Palme d'Or. Tell us about South Korean director Bong Joon-ho's movie. Well, it's about a close-knit but poverty-stricken family of four who are really, really lower class. How can we tell? They're so low, they live in a basement apartment that's literally mostly underground, <laughs> below street level. They're industrious, they're just unemployed. We've gotten to the point where a wireless signal for computers or for phones is almost as important as clean drinking water in people's lives. So the film starts with mom and dad and son and daughter trying to capture a signal in every nook and cruddy cranny of their pretty awful abode. The family's only source of income, they get paid a pittance to pre-fold cardboard boxes for a pizza delivery service. For those who are religious in this situation, there are two expressions I've always found interesting. One is, the Lord will provide, and the other is, God helps those who help themselves. So our extreme lower income protagonists are smart and motivated. It's just that they've figured out that the deck is so far stacked against them that the only tactic that makes sense is to consciously shuffle the deck in their favor. And if that requires a bit of creative fibbing, so be it. So thanks to a referral from a friend from a good family, the son is hired to tutor a rich family's only child, a daughter, in English. That's the foot in the door. Uh, soon each member of the poor family will have insinuated his or herself into the rich family. I shall say no more. Okay, well, I, there aren't many people I spoke to who didn't love this film at the mm. Cannes Film Festival. Let's take a look at Parasite and hear what the director told France 24 right after his big win. The film is really about whether or not the gap between the rich and poor can dissipate and there is this sadness and fear that comes from this feeling that it won't be resolved anytime soon. I don't think it applies only to Korean cinema, but as well as in France with the Yellow Vest movement, the story is universal. Such a fun film. Now, mm. will the recognition from the Cannes jury at the festival have an effect on the fortunes of Parasite? I think it's safe to say that winning the Golden Palm in Cannes will be very beneficial all around. First of all, to potential filmgoers nationwide, uh, worldwide who uh, will presumably have the opportunity to see this dark, dark comedy uh, that straddles several genres and uh, is incredibly satisfying as entertainment while telling us something not entirely flattering about uh, Korea today and uh, the pitfalls of contemporary life in general. This is a terrific film. As you know, I've seen a lot of movies and I could not guess. I had no idea where we were headed next and that's what makes it so much fun. Back home, the director who has already had a marvelous track record as a filmmaker has been treated like a rock star. There were crowds and dignitaries waiting to meet him like the Beatles at the airport when he arrived in Seoul. Parasite sold 3.4 million tickets uh, in South Korea in four days and it is, I'm told, en route to be the most successful Korean film of all time. Here in France, the distributor had planned to release it on 120 screens. It's now 200 and they're not complaining but they needed to work around the clock to get that Palm uh, logo designation on all the posters and trailers and promotional materials. What other films then from Bong Joon-ho should we watch? 
Ah, well, you can't go wrong with Mother, the host, or 2017's Oja, the incredibly ambitious ecological-themed movie, that uh, monster movie that played in competition two years ago and actually helped spark that tedious and misunderstood controversy about Khan and Netflix that, just like a monster in a monster movie, pretty much refuses to die. Parasite was made for cinemas. Do not miss it. Okay, there we go. That's the Palm Door winner. Out this week is another far more modest um, film that also premiered in Cannes uh, last month, and the director just fortnight sidebar. Tell us about Franco-Swiss Particles. Well, Particles definitely belongs to the the less you know going in the better uh, school of viewing, a principle that the co-writer and director Blaise Harrison applied to his cast of young people from the Jex region who received script pages day to day. They didn't know it was happening till they got the script. In the continuing fight against art artificial intelligence that's none too bright, I'd like to point out that my computer kept changing Jex, G-E-X, to S-E-X. Okay, it's hard enough being a T nature without having to cope with the uh, balance between matter and antimatter in your safe seeming sleepy enclave on the Franco-Swiss border. So the town where Harrison actually grew up, and this disturbing tale is set, is home to the Large Hadron Collider at the CERN Particle Physics Lab. It's the largest machine in the world, and while it's 100 meters underground, its ineffable power may sometimes sneak to the surface in ways that only spaced out teenagers are equipped to notice. The film's tone insinuates that things that go bump in the night also go bump in the day. Road signs there should warn not only of twisty curves and possible skids, but I think shifts in the fabric of the universe ahead. Okay, well, let's take a look at this intriguing film, Particles. Il se passe des trucs étranges dans mon cerveau. Je vois des trucs bizarres. Parfois, moi aussi, je me réveille. Et c'est comme si le monde n'était plus pareil. Comme s'il changeait. Et que personne d'autre s'en rendait compte. Now, the main protagonist, who goes by the initials P.A., and his three closest pals screw around like high school seniors all over the world. None of them care much about school or fear authority figures. If you've ever been a teenager, you'll recognize this vibe. P.A. goes on a film, uh, sorry, he goes on a school trip to visit the Collider uh, in the extensive underground complex designed to hurtle particles into each other, replicating the conditions of the Big Bang to get to the origins of life itself. Let's say he started having off-kilter experiences prior to visiting the accelerator, and his visions just accelerate after that field trip. Quantum physics tells us that there really could be an infinity of parallel worlds. Personally, I'd vote for the one where nobody breathes a word of the Oscars until December each year. Uh, where does the so-called natural world and its possibly evil but possibly friendlier twin, the unnatural world, begin? This is a modest but unusual film with an excellent anxiety-boosting score. Okay, that was part of so next to the Aretha Franklin documentary that's been released nearly 50 years after it was filmed, Alan Elliott's and Sidney Pollock's documentary shows the creation of Franklin's album Amazing Grace over two nights in 1972 in front of a live congregation. Now the album remains the highest selling live gospel album of all time. What did you learn from the film? Well, this is a really fun time capsule, so I learned a lot. Uh, Franklin had re recorded 20 albums at that point, but she wanted to do one of the music that she learned about uh, growing up in her father's church in Detroit, uh, gospel. This is a recording session, and it's a participatory celebration because the people in the audience can't stop popping up like, you know, slices of toast from a toaster. Just about the only white faces we see are glimpses of the director, Sidney Pollack, and his roving crew, and oh, Mick Jagger and Charlie Watts, who, you know, came by as uh, devoted fans. Sidney Pollack was a director. Uh, he directed uh, Out of Africa. Also an actor, you may know him as the agent in Tootsie. Okay, well, Sidney Pollock actually shot the original footage, but the project had to be abandoned because sound and vision could not be properly synchronized. Only now has digital technology permitted it to be released under the supervision of Alan Elliott. That's right, isn't it? Yes, they forgot to do a clap or what we call a slate at the start or finish of each sequence of film that ran through the camera. And that was an insurmountable error. You have two different machines, the camera, the tape recorder, and you need to be able to synchronize the sound. Everybody knows how annoying it is 
if the lips and the sound don't match up. They tried everything, including lip readers, but they just couldn't produce reliable results. So the Warner Brothers held on to all this marvelous footage, but they were never able to make a film about it until now. So Alan Elliott had been interested in completing the movie since 1990. He bought the rushes from the studio and using nifty technological advances was able to put the sound and picture together at last. That part took almost 12 years. And then for some reason, Aretha herself didn't want the film released. Once she died, negotiations were completed and audiences can finally save her. A very special document of an unbelievably impressive set of pipes, a pretty cool reverend at the Watts Church where it was filmed, and a very, very uh, melodic choir led by a charismatic conductor named Alexander Hamilton. And you think this was worth waiting for that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, this is a, um, is a saga with a happy ending, a long saga with a very happy ending. By the way, uh, the release um, strategy is unusual. It's only showing in France between June 6th and June 10th. They're kind of treating it like a concert tour. So don't let this one slip by. And she had a very exciting life, didn't she? We don't find out about the details in the film, but you were quite surprised by what's happened in the uh, When Rolling Stone wrote uh, their obituary for her, it's practically book length, I found the astonishing piece of information that this amazing woman, this stunning vocalist, gave birth to her first child at age 12, had another kid at age 14, and, and yet went on to be Aretha Franklin. So um, yes, nothing could keep her down. Okay. Lisa, thank you so much. We're going to leave you with a taster of Amazing Grace. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.